Friends, it is Saturday, September 3rd, uh, 2022. I'm going to recite for you a passage that I know well from 1 Corinthians 13. It is a wedding passage, sometimes also used to celebrate the character of someone's life in a celebration of life. I'm sure you know it, but listen now as if you're hearing it for the first time. It is a passage on agape love. I'm going to use the word agape for love. Agape is patient. Agape is kind. Agape is not envious. It's not boastful. It's not arrogant. It's not rude. Uh, Agape does not lay down the law and insist on its own way. It's not easily irritated. It doesn't keep a record of things when things have gone wrong to refer to later. You know how some of us tend to do that in arguments. It doesn't rejoice in someone's wrongdoing, but it rejoices in everything that's true, that's kind of right, that's centered between two people. Agape bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, it endures all things. And then verse 8, agape never ends. This is the word of the Lord. So friendship in a married relationship is a beautiful thing. A necessary thing to communicate well, to be attentive, to have common interests, common purposes, uh, to um, invest time and energy in knowing someone well. That's a beautiful part of a relationship. So is the encouraging love that brings out the best in our partner, that sees their gifts. It helps us overcome fear and anxiety when we're, we're ready to, we're called into a task that seems too hard or use a gift we're not certain of. Uh, picking us up when we fall. This is a very powerful form of love. Eros, we've been talking about the last couple days. And Eros is a magical and beautiful part of love that draws us together, that helps the two become one. But all of these are ways of living into the love that exists in God's heart, the love that put the planets in their places, that created human beings, uh, the love that sacrifices and serves and blesses and forgives. Uh, the love that is committed to our good no matter what. And we have to learn to love that way. And so marriage is ultimately a training ground where we help each other learn to love that way and where uh, we hope to honor God at table with our partner and consult God in decisions. We want to study his word faithfully and worship with joy. And in that process of doing that together, we receive out of this incredible flow of God's heart Uh, we receive this agape love that we can share with each other. And as we've been trying to get out this week, that adventure that two people share is really becomes a missional adventure for as we train each other in resolving disagreements, in uh, in patience and kindness and gentleness, uh, in in, uh, forgiveness and, and so on, we are able then to share those same virtues and practices beyond our marriage with other people in the wider world and that extends the power of the kingdom for in our love and in our behavior people begin to see god's heart his love and his behavior let's take a moment and pray lord help us to be people who are capable of being fully committed to other people's good and let that happen in our deepest most intimate relationships first so that we can receive from you the gift of your supernatural love, a love that brings joy out of sorrow and peace out of division. And ultimately, as we see in the resurrection of your son, that same love can bring life out of death. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for being with us this week.